everybody? Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. A couple of verses for our call to worship this morning. And Sherry, I did it once again. I didn't light the candles. Uh, we need to do that. <laughs> Whose job was it to remind me? Katie, thank you for being my brains. <laughs> A couple of verses out of the New Testament this morning for our call of worship. Out of the book of Esther. Um, see if these words don't apply to where we're at today. Esther, the fourth chapter, the 13th or the 14th verse. Then Mordecai, that was Esther's uh, cousin, commanded to an answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then there shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou shalt come to this kingdom? Now catch this last line. For such a time as this. Who knows? Who knows that we are gathered here today for such a time as this? Well, why don't you stand up if you can? Greet each other, wave to them, um, you know. Sherry, yeah. come on, stand up here for me. Come on up here. <laughs> um, in the first service, my wife taught us how to say God is good in sign language. So, here we go. Here's your teacher. Just slow. Okay, For us that are handicapped. <laughs> God. God. Try that again. God. It's good. One more time. Please. God. It's good. Let's pray. Father, just thank you this morning that uh, we have the privilege this morning of gathering in your house, being in fellowship, but more than that, just being in worship with you. And Father, we're asking that this time together, on this day, for such a time as this, that the time together would be relevant for our time, and that your Holy Spirit would pour out a blessing upon everybody's ears today, so that it would travel straight into their heart, and we'd have a new purpose and a new design as we leave this building. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. May we see you. Thank you, sir. Well, we're into a time of prayer and praise. I have so many praises this morning. Uh, this has been quite a week. You know that Monday uh, we had our church conference here. I want to thank everybody that, uh, that came, everybody that participated. Um, special thanks. Uh, I thank you in the first service to Barb Doika uh, for doing all the, the clerical work and that. But uh, thanks for Reverend Randy Baines for taking care of it. And uh, uh, we had a good conference. And uh, I'm just very, very thankful uh, for that. Uh, Friday, uh, Sherry had procedures done in Pittsburgh. And uh, I, I, have, I was very blessed. Uh, and so was Sherry. Um, Everything went well. Thank you for your prayers. I see Deb in the back here. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for the thoughts and prayers too. I'm on my final turn to without the boot. And yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit longer. This to clump along. <laughs> yeah, I saw you had a you had a designer shoe on there. Yeah, I came through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. 
um, also prays. Last night, um, we had about 12 guys met out there, gathered around the fire. We ate good. <laughs> yeah, we had about enough food for, I don't know, quite a few. A few. But we met out a few, and there's some of you guys are here this morning. I want you to know that this church is prayed over. Why do you think? Your families have been prayed over by these men. And it wasn't just your pastor uh, doing the praying. We've started doing something that I'll bet you would have, as Walter Money used to say, scared the bejeebers out of most people. <laughs> I've been asking these men specifically pray for certain situations. This is the third meeting we've had that we've done this. You know what I found? I found men that never had the boldness to pray in public finding boldness in their life and praying for you. There was a spirit here last night when we gathered around that fire. But if you weren't here, I can't explain that to you. Josh, do you want to uh, say anything to that? Just, yeah, thank you. Thanks for everyone that's coming. Thanks for everyone that's supporting me. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and it was. It was a very wonderful time. Ten. I <clears throat> really, uh, to me, seeing two new guys there, I mean, that's just, to me, that's top dog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not just the idea that we're, we're praying for people, but also that there are new guys coming. If my people, if you call that my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and turn from their evil ways, and I will hear from heaven. I just want you to know that you're, yeah. Oh, you were just. Rob's going to have a praise, but go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Okay, okay. First of all, Franklin Graham is calling for a national day of prayer and fasting for the upcoming election. What oh, day is that? Today. Today is that day. So if you're not fasting, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, we, uh, I broke that fast already. <laughs> Leftover pizza for breakfast. I don't think that counts. Oh, no. <laughs> um, also, my daughter's um, COVID test came out negative, so that's a praise. And Friday, my son Ryan married Kat in a little private ceremony. So wow. that's a blessing. Good. Amen. Good. Good. Somebody else got a praise? Gert had her. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Gert had her. This is a praise and a prayer. Um, as, as Gertie told me uh, Friday, uh, we didn't get the, the kind of answer we were looking for. And Gert said to me, well, can I, can I just be frank, Gert? Can I just tell him? Yeah. Who are you? The, uh, if you didn't hear what Gert mumbled back there, he said, you're going to do it anyhow. <laughs> um, the spot in her lung has grown. Um, and Gertie asked me Friday when her and Patsy was driving home, what do you think I ought to do? I'm 86 years old. I'll tell you the same thing, Gert. I think you ought to listen to your daughter. Can we pray, just, can we just take a break right now and just pray for her? Father, just pull up her. She is a warrior in your kingdom. She has influenced so many lives. And you have never left her out of the palm of your hand. So we put her in that trust today. For she knows God is good. And we believe that also. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. What other prayer requests do we have today? I've got a whole list of them. 
prior to freeze, I get induced on November 3rd. November 3rd. Wow, on election day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, the third. Yes. All right. All right. Heather? If you didn't hear what Heather said, the, the man that got uh, killed at JWF, a personal friend of hers, um, or keep that family in your prayers, huh? Mm -hmm. Who else this morning? Linda? I have a praise and a prayer. My neighbor's mother, who's 82, has dementia. She got out of the house during the night. And anyway, to make a very long story short, um, she fell in the field, and Chad, Karen's son, was out hunting with his boys, and he discovered her, called the ambulance and the police, and I mean, what are the chances? I really believe it was God's intervention, and he had to be there at that time. For such a time yeah. as this. And she's in the hospital, she's doing well, but she was hypothermic, and her temperature had dropped to 95, I think. Uh, Karen, Karen told me the whole story. Oh this morning, and, uh, you know, how, how old did you say she was? She's at 82, 84, but they didn't know who she was. Yeah, I thought she was 90, because that's no. what she said. No, she didn't know their name, her name, and Chad called me, and he said, Aunt Linda, do you know who this is? And she said she lived at 940. I knew right away it, it was my neighbor's mom. And it's terrible. When we went over to tell her, she was still in bed. She didn't even know. Yeah. And it was that really? Excuse me? Was that Nellie? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, so she wandered off. She has dementia. Yeah. She wandered off. Um, Karen's son, Chad, found her in the field. The whole time, I said this, yeah. It wasn't, it didn't just happen. No. He showed between hunting and Munster or across the road. He went across the road. Got to where he was going, and there was a sod park there. Someone already had a spot. He said, let's go back. I mean, every step of the way, he said, what are the odds, because I never come out of the woods so I'm done hunting. And he first thought it was a pile of rags. And he put a scope, I guess, on it and saw she was moving. I mean, it was just how everything fell in place for her to be found. It was God's intervention, and nobody can tell me different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Others? Karen? Um, would Cheryl share what she shared in Sunday school about Jenny? She hasn't, since she fell, she hasn't stayed alone in her house, and she was very uh, scared of that, and not not because of anything I but uh, the Lord directed me to the right passage, and she said, it just calmed me, I kept the Bible open to that, and she slept through the whole night, and um, yeah, that, that's just Jesus. Praise God for his word. Yes. And maybe it's my age. I'm old, but I had such a horrible morning this morning. I was getting ready. I, I don't know why. I was thinking I had to be here at 9.30, and then I thought I was going to be coming at 9. I looked at the clock, and it was 10.09. Oh, my God, I have to be there at 9.30. I tried to put the clock on. I couldn't get it on. <laughs>
maybe they'll put us in the same wing. Because I think I'm, I'm doing exactly the same thing. Heather, you had, did you have your hand up? No, okay. Back. Well, I've prayed about it. Eh? Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Unspoken. Unspoken, yeah, man. Everybody will have Everybody will have So I'm going to tell you the same deal as what I told you last week. I pray better on my knees. I'm going to kneel the altar. I know it's COVID. I know we can't come up like we normally do. I miss that. Don't you miss that? Don't you miss gathering at the altar? I really do. So, uh, I, you know, if you feel comfortable just sitting there and praying, if you want to kneel at your pew, uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go to the altar and pray. Okay? Morning, God. Great morning you've given us. Great people that we that, that you have allowed us to be, not because of us, but because of you. Father, we have heard multiple praises in your house. And along with those praises, there are those prayers. And so today, Father, we, we lift up those praises as a sweet, as the Bible says, Savor to your nostrils. And we lift up those prayers as a deep concern of our hearts. So all the names that have been lifted up today and all the names that are on our heart, we cast them before the cross of Jesus Christ and trust him to do what is his will. Father, we pray for this country. We hear that Franklin Jam is calling this day a day of prayer and fasting. And perhaps for those of us that have already <laughs> broke that fast, we could separate a day ourselves. So Father, I just pray during this election that not only the right people would get in there, you're in charge of that. But we as believers would exercise that sacred right that built this country that, that we would vote we would vote of our own conscience, uh, not being influenced by nobody, but vote according to our own biblical moral values. And so we pray for those that are being elected and those that are elected. We pray for our church and churches elsewhere and the times that we're in, that you would continue to sustain and guide us. We pray for our military people. We pray for those that serve us in institutions and hospitals and uh, first responders. We pray for those that work in the prisons and those in the prison. And we pray for each other. And so as it has come to the point of time where we begin to be in worship together, may we set our hearts toward the cross and pray that prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have our children's message this time. I 
I finally sunk in. Okay, you, know, I, I was, you know, I am a little slow. You know, that's all right. lesson in the past. It's just too cute and appropriate not to do it. So, the other week, we were driving here to church, and I wasn't here last week because so I had to work. But I said, look at the leaves. Like, what are they doing? Changing. They're changing colors, right? It's beautiful. Tom and I took a, a drive over the mountain yesterday, and uh, you know, just looking at all the colors, like that's nice. You know, it, it is a beautiful sight to see in Pennsylvania in the fall, is the changing of the seasons, right? Um, we can think about springtime and wintertime and all the seasons, you know, you get that change. That's a good change, right? Do we always like change? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, change isn't always good. We're not always receptive to change. Um, Sometimes the changes aren't what we wanted, and it's not very pleasant for us to accept, but change happens, right? Right. But again, sometimes change can be good. So I have a Bible verse. It comes from Hebrews chapter 13, verse uh, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. So God doesn't change. Jesus doesn't change, right? And that's something that we can always rely on. We always know that the seasons here are going to change. We're okay with that. We're not always good with the extra changes, like this whole COVID and all of the restrictions. Like, I just want to hug people. I want to shake hands. It's, it's like that itch inside, you know, it drives me crazy, especially at work, you know. Like, I'm around a lot of people who are vulnerable, and, and they need that love and compassion. I just want to hold them and hug them. I'm not allowed. <laughs> So sometimes we don't like change. But we know one thing for sure. God does not change. He is good yesterday, he is good today, and he's going to be good tomorrow. And we can have trust and faith in that, right? In Sunday school today we talked about um, God guides us. And we know that he's always going to guide us in the right direction if we listen to him, right? Because he's good. So I don't know if anybody has ever heard of this pumpkin poem. We carved pumpkins last night. Piper, Piper carved pumpkins last night. She had a blast. She loves digging in that stuff, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so when we think about change, we can think about ourselves as a pumpkin. Some of us are more round than others. <laughs> but we got this pumpkin, okay? And when we have God come into our life, what is, what's one of the first things we do with a pumpkin? We cut the top off, right? So we cut open the top so the Lord can open your mind and fill you with wisdom and guidance. Okay? And then what do we do? Pray for favorite part. We take all the seeds and yeah. the gunk out. Scoop all the gunk out. You get that scooper or your hands, you know, that's what we used to use. And you scoop out all the yuckies. The Lord takes away your, the fussiness, takes away all the sin and the sadness and all of the negativity that you're holding inside, right? All that gunk. You can take that away. And then, what do you do? Carve it. You carve the face, right? So, you cut out the eyes to open your eyes to see all of the beautiful things and see the good of the world. Um, you carve out the nose to help I can't read. <laughs> help me to be a sweet fragrance for others. So people can sometimes say, like, he smells bad. And it doesn't necessarily mean they smell bad and use some deodorant, but, you know, when you have a negativity, it kind of puts off a bad odor to people, right? Um, it carves out the mouth, and it says, the Lord to help always speak true words, kind words, speak love, okay? Um, because words can hurt, right? You don't think they can, but words can cause a lot of damage if you say the wrong thing. And then we put in a candle. I think I have one in here. I'm not going to light it, but you take the candle, and what do we do with the candle? Um, we light it. Up and it, and then it, goes like a it lights up, right? Yes, and that candle represents Jesus, 
sees the light that comes inside of us, right? And then it shines for everyone to see. And then you have like have a happy face. This is hyper happy. <laughs> So, when you're carving pumpkins, if you haven't already, or maybe in the years to come, every time we carve pumpkins, I think of this. You know, the change that we're giving this pumpkin is the same change that we can do for us. And we can take out all of that negativity and let Jesus come in, light up our life, and then we can shine that light for everyone else to see. And then maybe somebody else is going to want that light inside them. Right? So, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for the changes that we see, the good changes. But I'm so thankful that we know no matter what, you will always be our constant and you will never change from us. Please be with us, protect us all, be that light in our life so we can shine that light for others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. You come to me. <laughs> hey, now... With our children's message, you know, I, pre COVID, we always had a schedule and, and everybody would do it. We, and we used to have 20 plus kids up here, and I know COVID's changed everything. If you would like to do a children's message um, next week, <coughs> let me know, and um, I would be glad to oblige you. And Whitney, you know what? I, I think we have, um, can also, Jess and Whitney both, there's only one rule about having babies. You don't have them in church, okay? I uh, said, so have none of that. And then I think next year, Whitney, yeah. I've been watching this stuff on TV where they have these pumpkin throwing contests. I think we ought to have a pumpkin throwing contest next year. Remember how we used to do the big slingshot with the water balloons? And we used to put squeak down at the end and see who could hit. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I don't think we could blow up pumpkins on that wood patch down there. I think it'd be pretty cool. Anyhow, we're not going to talk about that anymore. Um, I chose just, just a couple of verses from the first um, first verse of the Gospel of Mark. So if you have your Bibles, if you look up the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 1. We're going to go from 14 to 17 in chapter 1. And so let's not forget who we are this morning. Uh, that we are people that are so blessed uh, by God, uh, and we need to show Jesus that reverence. So if you could and if you would, if you can't, no, that's fine, but if you could and you would, would you stand with me as we give reverence to the, to the words of Jesus this morning? Mark chapter 1, starting in 14. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. If you do not have this uh, verse, next verse, verse 15, highlighted in your Bible, this would be an excellent time to do it. Saying these four things. The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye, and believe in the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Those of us who grew up in Sunday school, what did we do? I, I'm not allowed to sing. Just pretend I'm not. I will make you fishers of men. Thank you, Lord, that you give us the choice to follow you. And we would ask this morning that you would rightly divide these words among us. I'm asking for a grace covering this morning. I'm praying for these folks here, those folks that are watching and hearing. Um, but more than that, as I'm praying for them, I hope that they're praying for me. And so I... I, I I do not want to say anything that takes the Word of God out of context this morning. I don't want to say anything that 
would place doubt from the devil in people's minds. And I don't want to say anything that would harm somebody. And so with that understanding, this morning we ask for help. In the mighty name of Jesus. That you would take a sinner like me and just pull that side of me that wants to rebel out of you and fill that void that's left with your Holy Spirit. And by your power, all those things can happen. And we're going to give you the praise in advance. For it's in the Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this Sunday is the Sunday in the church year that uh, we as Protestants celebrate the Reformation. And throughout the, throughout the country today, and well, actually all over the world, uh, names like Martin Luther, John Calvin, and in our own Methodist tradition, John, John and Charles Wesley, these, these people who saw wrong in the church and took a stand against it, and there was this, this, this time that the world turned upside down. So that's what I titled this sermon this morning, The World Turned Upside Down. Now, in truth, reformation of believers has always been, since time began. God has always spoke through people to eject, dress God's people when God's people were acting in a way that, that wasn't according to his work. With respect to all those reformers, I believe that the greatest reformer of all times is Jesus Christ himself. So in today's text, that text that we read, the simple little verses today, there was a start of a reformation that did and still is <coughs> turning the world literally upside down. Let's talk about this scripture a little bit. The Gospel of Mark, Mark writes in a way where he doesn't give us a whole lot of detail. You know? his, his focus is on Jesus and Jesus' ministry. So you don't get what Matthew and Luke say about Jesus' birth and, and what happened up that. Mark is just focused on the earthly ministry of Jesus. And he begins this gospel by introducing John the Baptist, preparing the way for Jesus Christ. And then he, he turns to Jesus being baptized by John. And then he quickly goes to Jesus going into the wilderness to be tempted. Then John being put into prison. Now he does all this in about 15 verses. And then he gets to what's really the heart of what the gospel of Mark talks about. He begins these verses that we talked about, about Jesus preaching. And he said these four things here, Jesus did. And I want you to remember this. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is here. Repent and believe the gospel. Let's get through them again. The time is fulfilled. Kingdom of God is here. Repent and believe the gospel. Now, that is the message of Reformation. And from my point of view, that's what the church needs to hear today. And so Jesus then sees his two brothers. Two brothers right here sitting in the front row. I told Ken, how is it that these kids that I call grandkids got these pretty girls hanging on their arms? <laughs> how did that happen? You know? Well, Jesus 
species too dry. That are fishing. And the gospel of Mark simply says, Jesus says to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. And he simply says, they left their nets, they forsook their nets, and they followed Jesus Christ. That was the beginning of the greatest reformation that ever happened. And soon, in just a few years time, the world was and will be turned upside down. There. I just got three things I'd like to talk to you about this morning from these texts. The first one being the message of reformation. Once again, because it bears repeating what Jesus said. The time has come. The kingdom is here. Repent and believe the gospel. History is said is bound to repeat itself. So throughout history, God has used whatever means that he has to to bring his people back to him. Now I want you to use your theological minds and not take this out of context. We know that the word of God tells us that it is not God's will that no one should perish. And then out of personal experience, we have seen firsthand that God is very good at taking what the devil means for harm and somehow miraculously using it for good. Keep that in your mind. It's not God's will that anybody should perish. And God can take bad things and through the power that only he has, turn those bad things into good things. Well, we're in uncharted waters. This is nothing like we have ever experienced ever before. Scary, isn't it? Isn't it scary? You know, look at those kids over there. They're sort of paying attention. <laughs> and I wonder what kind of world they're going to grow up in. What are they going to see? Stuff I never did. Probably things I wish they wouldn't see. It's not only scary, it's disturbing in a hundred different words that we could use to do. But even in this crisis that we're experiencing, there's the still small voice of Jesus Christ. And he's still speaking to hearts. The Jesus message of 2,000 years ago, it's still the same. It's time. It's time. Jesus' kingdom is right here. We don't have to wait for it. It's right here. We have to repent of who we are believe the gospel. So last night there's about a dozen of us out here kind of like Jesus' disciples, huh? There was a dozen of us out here that sat around the fire out here and we prayed over this church. We prayed over its family because those men decided that it is time to make a stand for Jesus Christ. A time to make a stake for our families a time to take the battle to the enemy, not in the power of us, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And just like in the days of old, I believe God's raising up people like Joshua. Young men that have caught the vision of Jesus Christ and what God has for us if we would only listen. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is here. We don't have to wait for some. Jesus is here. And we need Jesus now more than we've ever needed him, at least in my lifetime.
And we need to repent. We need to repent of being a lukewarm people. And just sitting on the fence. Neither in nor neither out. Just good enough to come on church on Sunday and, you know, say a few prayers. Feel real good when you leave. Jesus said, book of Revelations, I'll spit you out of my mouth. We need to repent. And we have to believe that this gospel of Jesus Christ is the living word of God from the beginning to the end, and we have to believe that what he says is true, and we have to believe that what we do with that gospel will turn the world upside down. Meat makes up, uh, pineapple upside down cake. So that little heathen behind him over there <laughs> You can only guess who that is. <laughs> Told him last night, how come that cake pan is upside down? <laughs> and Mead said something to the effect that that's the way it's supposed to be. So uh, Ian decided he should turn the cake pan the other way. <laughs> Not that he would ever do that. <laughs> and Mead said something like this, and please take this right. He said, when a woman tells you what to do, you have to do it. <laughs> Can I put that in spiritual terms for you? <laughs> when God tells you what to do, you better do it. <laughs> if you want your world upside down, you better do what God tells you. I believe we would reform this world if we just do those things. And not only our world, but the whole world would be turned upside down. Second point, becoming fishers of men. Jesus sees two brothers doing what they know how to do. They knew how to catch fish. That was their occupation. That's why they made their money. That's how they supported their families. That's their life. And so he takes what they are, fishers of fish. He tells them if they would follow him, he would turn them in not no longer fishers of fish, but they would be fishers of people. Here's the deal. Don't you like that commercial from Jake from State Farm? Here's the deal. Jesus is still calling out everyday people out of every walk of life, and he is still saying, if you follow me, I will do something in your life that you never thought possible. I've got to tell you, me, I don't want to embarrass you. I heard you pray last night in public. That was a revelation, and you did good. <laughs> You did excellent. But you got to allow God to let you do things that you never thought was possible. Does that make sense? You know what I heard from these guys last night? I heard a holy boldness that I haven't heard from them. I heard these older men talking to these younger men. I heard people praying for things that I never, you know, that, that, that I didn't have. I didn't even have to. They volunteered to do it. There was a holiness there last night, wasn't there, guys? All right. Not by your strength, Jesus said. Not by your power, not by your abilities, but because, as Whitney said in her children's message, with God, all things are possible. You won't just catch fish, Jesus said to him. You'll catch people. Hearts will be changed. Families will come together. The kingdom of God will come to earth. And your world will be turned upside down. Last point this morning. You've got to forsake your nets and follow him. 
Real plain, just simple talk this morning. Simon and Andrew, those two men, they forsook their nets and followed Jesus. Nets are traps. Brock and Zach, before we had money, when I was, you know, your age and young, somewhere in that shed, and I'll show it to you someday, I have this mini net. How many of you have a mini set in there? It's got weights on the bottom, bottles up on top. I'm supposed to stay here, sorry, but I'm forced to have it. <laughs> and so, my friend Jim, you know Jim. Um, when we want to go get minis for fish, we'd go down the wind run, because there was minis in that little stream. One of us would hold that net at the bottom of the hole, and the other one, we'd get up there and kick the rocks and make them water as money as what we could and scare those minis into that net. They were trapped. Trapped in the net. You see, not only are nets traps, but sin is a trap. Sin allows you to swim into it, and then it gets a hold of you, and before you know it, that sin has you trapped in that sin. And just like a fish in a net, once sin's net got you, it got you. And you can fight, and you can struggle, and, and we've all netted a fish with a, with a net, and we've seen that fish struggle and try to get out of that net, but it was impossible to get out of that net because it was caught in the trap of that net. That's the way sin works. You can struggle, you can fight, you can try to get out of that, that net, that trap, but you're helpless and hopeless in yourself. And what do you got to do then? You got to forsake that sin that has you trapped there. Do you get that? And the only one that can get you out of that trap of sin is Jesus Christ himself. Because you don't have the strength and the power and the wherewithal of yourself. And just as the old hymn says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I'm almost done. This conclusion. This is a Sunday that the church celebrates Reformation. I think it should be to celebrate the I think it should be the Sunday that the church practices Reformation, not just remembers it. Now, I hate to say this, but it's true. The church has become selfish with Jesus. We cannot no longer afford to keep Jesus Christ confined into the walls. Can't do it. If you want to see the world turned upside down, Bill Boyka said last night that every one of us older men should be inviting a younger man to come into our fellowship. I don't care where that younger man came from, where he is and come from, or what it isn't, but we can no longer be selfish with Jesus Christ and keep Jesus Christ confined within the walls of this church. We've got to get out there and find the fish. We have to desire this morning to see this world turned upside down with Jesus. Because here's the deal. Time is fulfilled. We're not one of us, not one of us sitting here today knows what we got tomorrow. But it's time. The kingdom of God is right here. We don't have to wait on Jesus. He's here. We have to repent. Repent of being a lukewarm church. Of letting everything and anything
and get in our way to take priority over what God would have for us. And we've got to believe this word is true. Because that's what we hang our hat on. So today, as we come to the end this morning, perhaps, perhaps, not because I said it, but because Jesus said it, Something was said here today pricked your heart. You heard that. In the chaos of your life, you heard that still small voice of Jesus saying those things to you. And perhaps, perhaps your world needs turned upside down. You've been denying it, you've been pretending like it doesn't exist. But there's a whole lot of bad going on. We would just do those things that Jesus said. Not only our world, but the world out there would just be upside down. I'm going to pray the altar is always open. I'm going to pray whether it's COVID or whether it's not. There's no hold up. And if God's talked to you, this is a great place to be. Thank you, Lord, for your words today. Pray have been faithful. Father, if, if you spoke to somebody, let's forsake the nets and go catch fish. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been a good day to be in church, huh? Go in peace, go in joy, go in love, go catch some fish. Lord, watch between me and thee while you're absent. Together. Amen. Now, I have to, I've been practicing this. We're going to, Candy's going to play it. I'm going to talk it. You're going to talk it along with me since I'm not saying it. <laughs> Thank you, guys.